So starting out, um, how influential uh, was the involvement of uh, Stephen Colbert in your decision to sign on originally to the show? Well, I was very excited about it when I heard that Stephen Colbert was behind this project. Mm. I mean, he's, he's just so incredibly uh, on top of the news and what's happening, and his writers are so, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's, there's anyone on television that, that has uh, uh, better, better writers that are more topical and more current, and uh, he just, uh, it was a real honor to, uh, to, be, uh, to even be thought of mm. uh, in the process of uh, auditioning for this show, Martin. Fair enough. Um, so in terms of the audition process, um, what steps did you go through? Well, it was really interesting because I, I don't think I was on the radar because the show, the Late Show, is produced out of New York, mm -hmm. and I live in Los Angeles. Yeah. So, as uh, I understood it, that they wanted to have the entire show be recorded, uh, taped, and written, and have all the talent be in New York City. Mm -hmm. And so, it was just something that it really wasn't open up. It wasn't opened up to casting. Yeah, sure. Outside of New York, and that you know that typically happens when a project originates from Los Angeles. They want to keep it uh, in LA, so it was just something that I really didn't think much about. But I had done a Donald Trump focus group yeah. where they, uh, yeah, they had written some uh, some kind of silly, funny campaign ad, yeah. and this uh, eventually made it to uh, to some of the people. Uh, to one of the writers, our, in fact, our showrunner, R.J. Freed, mm -hmm. from our show, yeah. uh, uh, heard that and, and, and asked me uh, if I would be interested in, at some point in maybe trying to audition for the show, but not to get my hopes up. Yeah, sure. Fair enough. Um, so, um, obviously, our cartoon president is now into its third season. Um, what is it about the subject matter that keeps you coming back? <laughs> wow, what is it, sir? <laughs> We've only got 15 I mean, minutes, uh, remember, yeah? It's the start. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have a distinct advantage over most people. People watch the news when they get up or when they go to bed. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a circus. But, I, I mean, for me, I get to, uh, I get to sort of uh, get it all out mm -hmm. in, uh, in a recording session. And, uh, and my wife said to me, you're campaigning against yourself because you're both uh, Biden and Trump. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I get to have a lot of fun. And, and, and you know, the writers are, they're just unrelenting, undiminishing yeah. in, in how funny they are and what they do to try to be up to the minute with what's happening in the news. Or we do our topical code opens, mm -hmm. which is a segment that is right before the actual episode. Yeah. And so every week, every Wednesday, we record a topical cold open, and they animate it, and then it drops on YouTube on Friday. Uh -huh. So they're really, really uh, exactly as, as close as we can to what's happening in the news uh, at that moment. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so actors, actors often say um, that they need to relate to their character in order to play them. Um, the question is, uh, what facets of Trump and Biden make that possible for you? Well, listen, I have to tell you, Martin, that uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of incredible things that are happening in that great country, and some people are talking about it, and a lot of people are not talking about it. But look, I mean, I want to tell you that you know the Democrats they want to take away your religion, your God, your guns, your cheese, the terrible Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Uh, I have to say, I don't relate to. I don't relate to Donald Trump <laughs> even, even slightly. I, the, the closest thing I can say is that yeah. I spent about 15, 16 years in New York in yeah. the first part of my career, and I knew people from Queens. Mm -hmm. I, I knew the accent. Mm -hmm. I was familiar with it, so mm -hmm. I kind of knew characters that were that were like that, so I kind of kept that in the back of my mind when, when the audition came around, but I, there's nothing that I would say in my life that uh, really directly relates to uh, uh, having a handle on, on you know, on, on or something, anything in common, I guess you could say, with him, no. Absolutely. Uh, just that we're both from the East Coast. 
Okay, fair enough. Um, and and how about Biden? Exactly the same, or? All right, look, 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 folks, look, folks. We're in a battle for the soul of this country. <laughs> the election is about one word, three letters, folks. J O B S. This isn't who we are. Who are we? Where am I? Who am? <laughs> Where am I? Who are we? Oh, here we, here we are. <laughs> so I'll take the title. No. You know, I, uh, I guess, I guess the the, you know, the commonality. Mm. I, if Biden is from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I grew up in outside of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. so I guess the fact that I have the East Coast, uh, you know, denominator in, in in with both of the characters. Uh, I mean, they're both old guys in their seventies, so <laughs> I, I don't feel like I have anything in common with with with, with them. Mm -hmm. But they're su they're such characters. They're so broad. You kind of don't have to do anything. They already have so much there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, which which brings me to my next question. Um, with Donald Trump in office, uh, to what extent do you think there's there's a line between the fact and fiction um, that's depicted on the show? <laughs> wow, that's a very it's a great question. Sometimes I think when I'll when I'll watch any of the news channels or I'll see a news feed on my phone yeah. and it'll be something about the, about the administration I'll think, oh my god are, <laughs> is, he, is he watching our show? Are yeah. they stealing from our show? Because it's almost like art is imitating life or life is imitating art. Sometimes I don't know, Martin. It's so bizarre <laughs> what happened that I, I kind of feel for the writers because they have to they're struggling just to make it even more outrageous and to exaggerate what's happening more to make it funny, but yet we really don't have to do that, in, in a sense. Absolutely. Um, so in your opinion, um, how much satirical leeway is afforded the show, um, it being a cartoon? Oh, I think we get away with a lot. I mean, in animation, you can, you can make almost anything, anything happen. So, whereas like, you know, if, if it was a Saturday on that, Saturday Night Live sketch, yeah. um, you can play it. it, it could be, it might be offensive, but I think animation, mm -hmm. I think we get, we get away with more because the characters are cartoons. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it's, a, it's a broader, a much broader version. So I think we, we get away with it. People just, they kind of allow us uh, to, and, and you know, we don't take sides. Our cartoon president doesn't take sides. We don't, we don't pick on the Republicans or just pick on the Democrats. I mean, every everybody is fair game they, they kind of go after everybody everyone's up everyone's um under fire um so absolutely <laughs> as you took over um you've taken over from from mel blank obviously uh, as the uh, the voice of looney tunes um what links could you could be um what, what link what links could there be, be what links could there be between the two universes sorry i was having a, an issue there <laughs> Well, you know, I'll tell you what I think is kind of interesting, and I didn't see this as a parallel, mm -hmm. but when you when you look at the division in our country between the Republicans and the Democrats and mm -hmm. Trump and Biden, conservatives and liberals, I kind of almost see Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. <laughs> I mean, they're arch nemesis. They're both alpha characters. Yeah, sure. And, and Bugs is always trying to, you know, he's always trying to get the better of... Uh, of uh, Elmer Fudd and Elmer Fudd trying to kill him. So, I mean, it, it is, uh, <laughs> it, uh, I don't know, maybe that's uh, stretching it a little bit, but, but uh, it, it is, uh, it, it's almost cartoony. The, the, the what's happening in our news is very sort of animated in, in and of itself. So from, from the stable of characters that you, you do do, um, what what uh, which ones are your favorites and 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 why are they your favorites? It's too dark. I'm a rabbit, all right. Would you like to shoot me now or wait till I get home? Shoot him now! Shoot him now! I would have to say uh, Bugs Bunny uh, is probably maybe one of my all-time favorite characters. Uh, of course, I like Sylvester as well. Suffering <laughs> <laughs> fuck attack. I gotta get that little yellow bird. It was the last thing I do. Who oh, I thought I saw a putty tag. I did, I did saw a putty tag. And then I say, and then there's Foghorn Lincoln. I say the, I say the rooster. 
You know, I say nice girl, but she reminds me of the highway between Dallas and Fort Worth. No curve. <laughs> uh, I mean, those are those are my. Uh, you know, I've been doing those those voices since uh, since the early '80s when when I when when I after I met Mel Blank, uh, that was when things started to change uh, for me, the trajectory of my uh, my career. So those are those are my favorite characters, the Looney Tunes characters, uh, probably. I mean, I love all the Hanna Barbera characters now. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I'm working on a show. It's called Jellystone, and I, mm -hmm. I do the voice. I'm Yogi Bear. <laughs> That's right. I'm the smartest bear, smarter than the average bear. <laughs> hey, boo boo. So. Uh, <laughs> Just, um, just purely because I've got you on the phone. Um, obviously, Looney Tunes and, and cartoons and Hanna Barbera and so on and so forth and, and Wacky Races are all part of my childhood as well. Um, what, what was Mel Blanks like as a, as a, as a man? Because I obviously only, you ever, only ever see him actually on the titles of the cartoons. So you never get an impression of what, what the man was like. Well, I was really fortunate. He would do lectures around the, the country, the, the United States, and he was appearing at the University of Pittsburgh in 1981, and I just mm -hmm. happened to, to catch his lecture, and they had a really lovely reception for him in our little dining hall, student union, mm -hmm. and he signed autographs, and he was very personable, and I found out where he was actually staying. Yeah, sure. And I knocked on his door, and he, he let me in, and uh, I just was such a gushing fan. He was the sweetest, he was the nicest man in the world. And saw that I was sort of a little in between and betwixt as far as my academic uh, education was. And he said to me, stay in school mm -hmm. and do your best to get your degree. And if you ever come out to L.A., look me up. So, I mean, we spent like almost an hour together. He just couldn't have been more, uh, just more open and more encouraging. So, that uh, Really, was very fortunate to get that close to him. Thank you, thank you very much for that, Jeff. Um, just touching on, um, yeah. obviously, touching on the Space Jam sequel, which I, I know that you've worked on. Um, how was your experience working on that particular project? Well, uh, they've they've given us the uh, the uh, the muzzle. We can't really really talk about. Mm. Um, the actual mechanics uh, of, of the film yeah, sure. uh, just yet, but I have to tell you, Martin, I am so excited about it. I think it's going to be it's going to be phenomenal when people see it. It's it's so great, and I'm so excited to be a part of a part of this film and LeBron James. I mean, mm. I, I just think people are going to love him, and it's a great story. Mm. And um, I'm just having a ball, you know, just 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 being a part of it. I think it's really going to be a, a. I think it's going to be a great film. So, uh, just a couple more questions, Jeff. Nice and easy ones. Um, so, what are your key considerations now when it, it comes to joining a project? Uh, what are the things that attract you personally? Well, I mean, I definitely, I definitely have to feel connected to to the characters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the case of our cartoon president. I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do just a, a one note a, a impersonation and acting job. I wanted to not judge the character mm -hmm. and just you know, find a space where I could create a lot of different levels. So if you get lucky and you have great directors and great writers, mm -hmm. you all kind of shape it to get shape the characters together. We all sort of seem to have the real estate for the characters. But I, I mean, I grew up with. Uh, Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Town, Bugs mm. Bunny, yeah. uh, Spider Man, Popeye, Superman, Batman. I mean, Batman was like my favorite as a kid. So, so, uh, and I was fortunate enough to work on a project. It was the last project that Adam West uh, and Burt Ward did, where where yeah. I was actually uh, the Joker uh, wow. for uh, uh, for the yeah for the most recent animated Batman. So, I mean, that was a dream. It it, it, it always seems like I'm attracted to something that affected me as a child. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it just sort of kind of, it seems to just happen that way naturally, that I'm somehow connected with projects from when I, from, from characters that, that are when I was 
a child. So I don't know if that's just by accident, but I don't I don't think like we choose it. As they say, the the book chooses us, and, and I I kind of think almost the the projects have kind of chosen me. Mm-hmm. Fantastic! A little bit of serendipity getting in there. Do you think? I kind of think so. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, and my last question, Jeff, completely off topic, um, and a question I ask everybody. Uh, can you describe for me your perfect Sunday afternoon? <laughs> my perfect Sunday afternoon? Mm-hmm. Whoa. Uh, okay, let's see. Well, I have two sons. Uh-huh. So if I get to talk to them, uh, that it doesn't get any better than that. And I have two wonderful nieces. Mm-hmm. And uh, a brother, a small family, so if I get to talk to my family on Sunday, mm. uh, vocally rest a little bit from, uh, from, the, from the week, <laughs> yeah, uh, and maybe, maybe they take a walk, uh, you know, by the ocean, mm-hmm. get, get outside, get some fresh, ex, you know, fresh air exercise, but uh, I would say family. The weekends are just trying to spend time with our families, and especially now, yeah, sure. during the pandemic, when, when they're having to when I haven't seen my family as much, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's, it would be nice to see people instead of doing a Zoom meet or FaceTime. Yeah, yeah, I think things have changed quite radically, haven't they? So, uh, so yeah, I think, I think, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I think to, to value your family and to spend time with them is, uh, well, it's like everybody will want to do that. Um, thank you very much for your time, Jeff. Um, have a lovely rest of your day and take care. Oh, thank you, Martin. This was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now.